Hey, Doc, have you seen my fake vampire teeth? Um, what are you doing in my closet? You have Game Boy camera. Sell me, sell me. You sold me down. and welcome to Eagle Land. So on today's double review, we cover something that I don't think we've actually touched on before. Smut. Oh, we've covered teenage girl fantasy romances and the harem dreams of young boys before on this show. But harems are much more straight sexual fulfillment and high school girl romances tend to be distressingly tame affairs that resemble something out of Tina Belcher's fantasy diary. Can there really be a whole island for kissing? <laughs> Today's mangas are straight-up housewife porn, Harley Quinn-style romances. Ah. Oh, and they're by the same mangaka, which is why I decided to group them. Let's Make Forbidden Love is the story of a woman who meets a wolf that can turn into a super sexy guy through the power of magic moon malarkey. It was mangaka Omitomu's first work, got a four chapter sequel, that then got a 40 chapter sequel, which eventually wrapped up the story. Midnight Secretary is the story of a professional secretary who gets assigned to work under a complete asshole who turns out to be a vampire and they eventually fall in love. Oh, and Midnight Secretary is a better manga in almost every way possible. Almost, which is why I'm comparing and contrasting them. But before we move on... <clears throat> Twilight joke. Twilight joke, Twilight joke, Twilight joke. Stephanie Meyer's a terrible author. Twilight joke, Yiffing, Twilight joke, Twilight joke, Taylor Lautner's abs, and oh, those crazy Mormons! Let's knock out Werewolf Diaries first. Hisako is being propositioned a bit hard by a drunk fellow. He gets chased away by a wolf that just happened to be wandering around a residential area of Japan. Then she offers to take the wolf home with her to help it escape the police, I don't know. She forms an immediate connection with the wolf and gives it a collar with a rock on the end to match his yellow eyes. Then one of Hisako's gentleman acquaintances shows up at her house in the middle of the evening and starts trying to schmooze her. This is a running theme with Hisako. She attracts assholes like some kind of rectum magnet and is incapable of telling them to piss off because she has no spine. But Yato steps in and tells him to piss off. Yato is the wolf. And then they bang. And apparently the sex was amazing. For you see, when the moon is full, Yato can transform from a wolf into a human with impossibly broad shoulders. He also retains his animal magnetism and tendency to insist women take care of him while he sits on his pack leader ass. So he stays at Hisako's house while she works to feed them both and he contributes nothing except his penis into her vagina. I'm gonna be straight with you, the only reason I read this manga for as long as I did was because of the sex scenes, of which there are many. And by the standards of Jose Smut, they're pretty well drawn. And it's a good thing the sex scenes are well drawn because the story does a shit job of keeping you engaged. Oh, it tries its damnedest with all sorts of contrived plot lines constructed to create maximum drama. But the problem is that the core engagement of the story is Hisako and Yato's relationship, which is basically unbreakable after one damn chapter. So every time something new breaks in to try and separate them, you just roll your eyes and wait for them to inevitably overcome the contrived challenge through the power of their love. Which is really annoying because there are good ideas at play here. Yato is a 500 year old magical wolf from Germany. How about some of those stories? How did he get to Japan? Did he ever kill any Nazis? Nazis! These are the questions that will not be answered. 
No, instead we waste time on whether Yato has an illegitimate child, he doesn't, and Hisako's hang-up about not being a wolf and therefore a bad match for Yato. And it's especially frustrating because there are legitimate problems they could deal with, like the fact that Yato cannot work so he basically leeches off of Hisako's earnings, or the fact that Hisako isn't immortal and won't be young and sexy forever, or the fact that this relationship is pretty bloody close to bestiality. The manga does devote at least a chapter to these ideas, but it's always in a half-serious, joking manner that isn't very satisfying. And it even makes some jokes about bestiality, with Hisako one night trying to seduce Wolf Yato. <laughs> hey, kitty. Uh, show me your pussy. So, like most romance novels, it ignores the more interesting bits of its premise in favor of the stereotypical self-insert fantasy romance tropes. Midnight Secretary strikes a far better balance. MS is about Satsuki, a company secretary for the Toma Corporation. She has just been assigned to work with one of the director's sons, Kyohei. He's, well, it rhymes with huge asshole. He tried to get rid of her, saying he doesn't need a secretary. Satsuki takes pride in being a damn good secretary and challenges him to keep her on for a week to see if he has any problems with her performance. And we're already doing way better than Let's Fuck a Werewolf. Satsuki is her own character with strengths and flaws. And she is really damn skilled at her chosen profession. Yeah, it may be a job associated with female subservience, but being an executive secretary is not easy, and she works doubly hard at it as a fuck you to Kyohei for doubting her abilities. He immediately sets her the task of handling his schedule and organizing important documents for meetings. He also tasks her with planning dates and buying presents for his cadre of hoes. She goes above and beyond on all her tasks and ends up impressing Kyohei but she notes that a lot of the bitches he takes into his office for sexing come out pale and wobbly. Worried that he is drugging the gal, she searches his office only for him to bring another hot bot in, and they start banging on his desk while Satsuki hides behind a chair. And it is at this moment that she discovers that her boss is actually a vampire! I wish I had more time to devote to the vampire mythos of this story, because it's actually pretty creative. But the covering the two mangas things really eats into the time budget, so here are the important points. Vampires don't like sunlight, they need humans to breed with, they don't really have much in the way of magical powers, oh, and they only suck blood from people they are currently having sex with so that the orgasm masks the blood sucking. And Kyohei is very pragmatic about his secret being discovered. Well, now that you know, you can better design my schedule. In fact, I'm putting you in charge of scheduling my feedings as well. And from there, it goes exactly how you expect. She has to offer him emergency blood because of Christians, and then she just swoons at his magic, sexy vampire powers. But the big difference between the two mangas is the degree of self-awareness. Satsuki falls in love slowly, and only after Kyohei lightens up a bit, wowed by how unbelievably good she is at helping him arrange his workload. And they both resist their feelings at first, Satsuki because she knows he's not an easy man to love, and Kyohei because he's got a prize-winning chocolate chip cookie on his shoulder about being superior to humans. But they do eventually get down to... a very interesting read because their actions have actual consequences. You know, the word oft omitted from shitty romance dictionaries? Satsuki switched jobs to get away from Bat Boy, but when she changes her mind again, she can't very well up and leave her new position. Manga spends a lot of chapters trying to clean that mess up. And when Kyohei decides he only wants sweet secretariat blood, he has to take blood supplement vitamins, which don't really agree with his stomach. Maybe you should have gone for the Flintstones chewables. Now before I wrap this up, let's comment on the art. Yeah, it is a little weird comparing an artist's work to themselves, but even then, Midnight Secretary wins. Both have pleasant, if limited, character designs. It's especially noticeable in the handsome male selection of designs. Oh yeah, this guy is clearly over 60. Look at that scruff. But Midnight Secretary just has some really solid lighting setups and really embraces a more gothic tone. I especially love some of the architecture designs. So overall, Midnight Secretary is just a far superior product. Except for one really important element of storytelling that most movies and games still manage to fuck up. 
The ending! The problem that Midnight Secretary runs into is that the end game can't help but feel kinda underwhelming. After all the shit they crawled through to make their love work in the first place, other people disapproving of their relationship seems like small potatoes. And oh no, their kid is a super vampire! Oh shit, that means he's twice as likely to wear capes! And the final chapter literally crams their entire wedding into the last half of a chapter. I'm not saying the ending was bad, it just couldn't help feeling anticlimactic. Whereas It's Never Lupus had a nice big pit that it dug for its own summary execution, but then the pit was so nice that we granted it a pardon. As the manga went on, it stopped forcing itself to have stupid plot lines and just let the characters be. There's a whole chapter where Yato and Hisako just hang out, her making jewelry and him watching history documentaries. It's small, but love is made of small moments. Yeah, there's still some stupid moments, yes, that is a cult, but it really does set up a surprisingly good ending. As long as I ignore the living statue that takes the form of a younger Yato, which I won't, because it's bleeding moronic! The ending is probably the most poignant thing that you could expect from a manga about fucking a wolf. Hisako gets old and dies, and she is buried beneath a cherry tree that slowly absorbs her spirit and through the power of the moon will someday house her spirit and allow her to materialize herself. And as she charges, Yato watches over her, peacefully content in his life. Which I'm totally cool with because becoming a magic tree was something that was established earlier. Had this manga ended any other way, I would have pitched a fit. Whether it be Yato losing his immortality, or Hisako gaining some immortality, it would have been bullshit of the black cow caliber. Which sort of retroactively makes the rest of the manga better. Yeah, the beginning is still shit, but that means you get to watch a creator actively improve their work as you read it. And then you can move on to Midnight Secretary, which is better in almost every way. So in the end, I recommend both of them. Start with the vampire one, and if the author's style intrigues you, then go and read the Let's Make Forbidden Love. The author's name, as I've previously mentioned, is Omitomu. She seems like a nice person, she's pretty goofy in her end-of-volume ask sections. But I still think that these two are her strongest works, but if you're really interested, there are some other things she's done that you can track down. Till next time, I'm Pluto Burns, and this has been Eagle Land. I saw a werewolf with a Chinese menu in his hand Walking through the streets of Soho in the rain He was looking for the place called Lee Ho Fuchs Gonna get a big dish of beef chow mein a different manga. It's weird. <laughs> it's pretty good. Read now.